Okay, recording is on. Let's pray and we'll start. Father, we thank you for another day. Thank you for this opportunity to be here, to gather together in person and online and those who will be joining on the e-learning. And Father, we pray that as we study, as we learn, uh, as we are presented with information, Lord, that our hearts and minds will be open, that the Holy Spirit will teach us and train us, and God, that we will be equipped to serve you well, to serve people well, and to make a difference in this world. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining the class today. I'll just uh, quickly review uh, what we did last week. And then I know I gave you all a little assignment, so I'd like to hear from you uh, for a few minutes. And then we'll move forward into this um, lecture. So what we were doing last week, we were talking about tools and uh, methods to study the Word of God. Uh, we talked about our objective. Why do we engage in personal study? We, we want to know the truth. We want to know God. God and and through that revelation we will also be transformed. We talked a little bit about you know why are there different versions of the Bible, and we also you know gave a little background on how translators go about doing Bible translation, and uh, and then we uh, just explained uh, where different versions or translations of the English Bible are positioned and uh, which versions would be very useful for Bible study. Okay. Now, this is very important to keep in mind, uh, especially as you're going to study the scriptures. You need to know right, um, that if you're using uh, the New American Standard Bible or the Amplified or the uh, English Standard Version, uh, you're closer to the original text. Right? So that's why uh, you can be a little bit more confident when you're studying the scriptures. But when you're using some other versions, you need to keep in mind that uh, it could be a thought for thought, meaning for meaning, or even a paraphrased version. And, uh, and so we need to be mindful of that when we're using different versions. So we went through that. And then we went through an overview of our different methods of Bible study. Uh, which you know, and we will kind of be, be, be explaining some of these uh, in greater detail today. And uh, we talked about the devotional method, um, where you take a passage, and this is typically what we do or we would do in our daily devotions. You're reading the Bible, you read a passage, and then you want to draw some insight from that passage, right? You don't want to just um, pass over or just quickly run through the passage. You want to gain some insight. So we said we can do these three things. We can uh, engage in observation, interpretation, and application. Observation, interpretation, and application. Right? You engage in that as you are studying the scripture. So we, we took uh, Mark chapter 14, verses 3 to 9, as an example. And I said, okay, take some time to look at that passage, engage in observation, uh, interpret, and apply, right? So I want each one of us to share one thought. I know, you know, we could all look at it and uh, you could derive many thoughts from it, or you would have many uh, 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 you would have derived many insights from it, but I'd like all of us to just quickly share one thought. I hope I hope you all did that, and uh, you were able to gain something from that passage. So I want to hear from you first. We will go to those who are in the class, and then we will uh, we will let those who are online share. Okay. So since we have so many people, a uh, one minute. Okay, not more than one minute. Within one minute, or maybe even 30 seconds, I want you to say one thought, right? So 
very clearly. You when you look at this passage, observation, interpretation, application. You may have learned a lot, but I want you to share one thought in 30 seconds or maximum one minute. I want you to share. So let's start. Uh, Bimal, please share and then quickly pass the mic or you can speak. Um, uh, hopefully our online students can also hear. Yeah, one minute, chair, and then pass it down. It'll go around quickly. Just share the thought. Don't don't have to read the scripture. Okay. Just say what was the thought? What was one insight that you gained from Mark chapter fourteen, verses three to nine? Go ahead. So here we can. Uh, Is your mic on? Is the mic on? Okay. So here uh, we read about that woman who come and uh, put that uh, put that alabaster jar and broke it and like uh, can I say in Hindi? Okay, Hindi. You say in Hindi. Fine. I might. I think we will understand. Go ahead. So here we see that a woman comes to Jesus and breaks her Sangmarmar ka patr todkar, jo uski jivan bhar ki kamai thi, lifelong she invest on that, and wo ekdam se Yeshu Masih ke paon mein aake usko tod deti hai, aur Yeshu Masih ke sar par us itru ko undel deti hai. To ye dikhata hai samarpan, it shows our sacrifice. Samarpan means sacrifice. Sacrifice and like what everything is for you. Surrender. Okay. So that's the thought that meant mm -hmm. the sacrifice she made. Please pass it down. I think we'll come last to you. Okay. 30 seconds, maximum one minute. What was one insight you gained? Yeah. I mean, just like the uh, woman here who um, um, showed her love and appreciation to Jesus whom she loved and uh, just like that I mean I would like to apply this by um, to those whom I love in my life mm -hmm. I want to have to I want to do things that um, to show them that I appreciate their love for me too mm -hmm. yeah that's what I learned so the thing that stood out was she expressed love and appreciation through what she did yeah. very good you know um, sorry there's a was that a helicopter flying or okay. even Go though ahead. yeah even though she was not invited one minute let that plane yeah. go <laughs> yeah. yeah please, please even though uh, she was not invited to that gathering she took courage to come there uh, and give worship to jesus knowing that she was a sinner and jesus can forgive her mm. so what struck you was that though she was not invited she still came. So that showed her courage to come in and very good. Yes, Sri uh, I observed from here that uh, sometimes we can't come out from our comfort zone and uh, we just hold ourselves back. Like uh, if we go, if we do that, what people will think. But the, so like, I can't hear you. That speak a little. Okay, just. Okay. Uh, uh, I observed from here that uh, sometimes we can't come out from our comfort zone, we mm. think about that, if I will do, do this, what people will think about me. But here we see that the woman all, uh, step out from her comfort zone mm. and did this uh, and worshipped Jesus. Mm. So she stepped out of her comfort zone, stepped in. Uh, yeah, you can imagine in this room with all the disciples, all the, and yet she came in and she, okay, good job. Okay. Francis. Uh, like, my understand, like, uh, Mm. For ourselves, like, we don't consider our situation. What is the situation? Like she, she is in her. She is not allowed for that place. Then she came and ministered with Jesus. Then the written is broke the flask. Mm. So that's showing like she don't have patience for serving. Jesus. She don't wait. She came. She suddenly do, did what she want. Mm. So like us, we don't wait for, like, uh, I have time, I will, the time will come. Whatever we have time, give for Jesus. Okay. So she took action. She came, she broke the flask, she seized the moment, like we would say, right? So that's what struck out for you. Sean, thank you. 
so I understood that the alabaster jar was more like a hardened heart. That you know, well, which you know, which we see uh, if you look at the passage where he talks about you know, like throwing um, seeds on the, on the ground. You know, some some it fell on rocky uh, rocky soil, some it fell on the uh, soft soil, some it uh, fell on the soil but thorns grew. So like that, I felt that alabaster jar was more like a hardened heart. In my thinking. And when she broke that jar, she finally opened her heart to God. Is what I thought. Mm -hmm. So uh, you felt okay. You so kind of your. Uh, you felt that the flask represented a hardened heart. And, yes. Okay. okay. Is it Anand and then Vijay? Okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. The first thing uh, I've observed is I mean, uh, we don't used to go to uninvited uh, places and all. So she has the courage that uh, to go to uh, Jesus and I have to meet him. The second thing is uh, okay. One thought. One thought. Yeah. Only one. I mean, okay. uh, that's a continuation. Okay. Okay. So I'll she, give you a chance. To say, she okay. waited. When for... somebody says one thought, you have to say one thought. Okay. But now you say second thought because first one has been shared. She so waited it's... for the moment. She waited for the moment. She gave what she had. I mean, everyone told that uh, like uh, why she is wasting all these things. And she waited for the moment. She 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 uh, gave what she had, so like uh, like how we also have we also can give what we had. We have good. Come, uh, please. Thank you. So my thought is like uh, importance. So uh, alabaster jar is like more valuable. So it's more important to her to uh, store. So she gave that importance to Jesus. So Jesus became the importance more important to her so the the value the importance value. she expressed in doing this good Chuck. for me like uh she give her best thing sorry she give her best thing best thing best thing oh she gave her best best thing uh -huh. which uh this is very important like uh she kept for many years and this is the best thing which she had mm. and she didn't think anything but she just give her best whatever mm. she can Good. So she gave her best. That's what stood out for you. Go ahead. Hindi. Hindi yes. Uh, <coughs> sir, मेरा सोच इसमें ये है कि हम देखते हैं कि जैसे वो स्त्री आई और उसने अपना कीमती चीज को उसके आगे रख दिया क्योंकि परमेश्वर ने उसे समय दिया था एक चांस दिया था तो हमें भी ये नहीं सोचना चाहिए कि हमारे पास क्या है क्या नहीं है जो भी हमारे पास है हमें उसको प्रभु के लिए देना चाहिए Okay, so what was what was your main thought? Uh, uh, that the moment the God gave her a chance is that what you said? Like whatever, what? you have, uh, whatever you have, you give at that moment. Okay, Prince. Sorry, if I don't understand clearly, I'm asking you. Uh, for me, what uh, really stuck is that uh, when Jesus told, like, uh, she did what she could, mm. like. Sometimes we need to, we think like we have to give more, but uh, all Jesus uh, asks is like, what you can give for me. Mm. And uh, the other thing is like, uh, when uh, everyone tells it's a waste, uh, but Jesus doesn't consider this as a waste. He look it so beautiful. And uh, one thing really in my mind is like, uh, what we do for Jesus may go waste, but uh, what we do to Jesus, it will be never waste. Mm. So that's why Jesus tells like wherever, gospel goes what she then is will be spread okay so though it seemed it appeared like it was a waste it was not okay that's what stood out for you good all right thank you thank you all for sharing let's listen to um those who are online um just want to welcome you um you know we'll take turns you can um either share your thought or you can i mean you can unmute your mic and speak or you can just put it in the chat uh, if you're going to speak one thought uh 30 seconds or a minute go ahead please so kumar you want to share or uh, you want if you want to put it on the chat that's fine Nina, Roshan, Miku, Arilla, Jacob, Prabhu, Karen. You can unmute, unmute and speak, or you can type in the chat. Roshan, go ahead. 
Pastor, what stood out to me in this uh, verses was that the prophet, the uh, this act, the action of this woman was very prophetic because Jesus says that she beforehand has anointed my body for burial, and uh, this also reveals to us the high priestly ministry of Jesus because the. Uh, she broke the flask and poured the oil on his head it says so and so it's by speaking of the high priestly ministry of jesus and he being the head of the church so that's what stood out to me okay so what stood out for you was um, she was anointing um, jesus for burial and uh, yeah so the woman didn't know i mean as far as uh, we can tell she may not have understood or known that Jesus is going to be crucified, you know. But yet, there was the purpose of God uh, being released through what she did. So, Nina, I see a, I see a question. Uh, is she depic depicted as a sinner? Uh, isn't it Mary of Bethany? So, there are two stories in the Gospels. Uh, there is uh, and two, two women who anointed the oil, anointed Jesus. And they are separate. They're different people. They're not the same. Uh, and, and we will look at that later. Uh, uh, you know, so uh, this person is not the same as the woman who came who was forgiven. right? So they are two separate women. So this was a woman. We don't know anything about her background. Uh, we, she could have been a very pious, righteous woman. Uh, we don't know that. Uh, but in the other case, there is a clear indication that, you know, um, uh she was uh a woman who came from a difficult and a different background so yeah so just to answer the question we will compare those two passages later all right okay Sivakumar's comment when time is there we need to do the work of god so that's what stood out for Shukumar. thank you for sharing as you said poor people always be with us we need to grab the opportunity and do god's work okay so what Shukumar is sharing is uh, doing things uh, in that opportune moment. Uh, Jacob shares, it was a great sacrifice because probably that was the only saving she had. Okay, that's what stood out for Jacob. Karen shares, uh, the woman with the alabaster jar shows her honor for Jesus. So that's what stood out for Karen. She's expressing her honor for Jesus. Good. Anybody else would like to share? You can either put it on the chat or you could speak. Unmute your mic and speak. Anyone else? Yeah, I, uh, can you hear me? Yes, Nina, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I, I thought it was John 12 that we were looking at. Uh, anyway, uh, so I thought what Mary did, uh, keeping aside whatever, because it says that she let her hair loose. I mean, she what she did was an extravagant display of devotion because it cost... Uh, the entire wages is what it says. I mean, the whole year's wages. So it cost her a great deal. So there was some, there was sacrifice and the, it was an extravagant display of devotion. So which I think it encourages us to me to do that. I mean, because Jesus is really worthy of all the devotion that we can give. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's the, the expression that it was, it wasn't something, you know, at least from her perspective, it was something very costly. It was extravagant that she gave, she poured out on the Lord. Anybody else who wants to share? Okay. All right. So thank you, everyone, for uh, taking time to do that, each one. So uh, I'm sure each one would have had more insights, and that's that's fine. I just wanted you to share one one thought on this. So we, um, Prabhu, you want to share something, Roshan? Uh, you want to share? Uh, hello, hello, yeah, Pastor. Uh, can can you hear me? Yes, Prabhu, go ahead. Uh, just uh, what stood up for me is uh, our action towards uh, people will be like what we think they are to us. So in Hebrew culture, uh, they use oil, uh, a kind of perfume to anoint them. So uh, it's kind of uh, showing her faith, like what 
she has like what she thinks that jesus to her it might be king or olden days they used to anoint kings even before they are king to make a king they have to anoint so i see uh, in that uh, insight okay okay um thank you i'm not sure i understand everything but i think you were talking about anointing anointing uh jesus and that's what stood out for you okay all right so let's go back to our study methods um so we were in this devotional method right so that's one way of studying you look at a passage you see what's happening in it then you interpret it and then you apply it to your own life so the most important thing of course is the application you know what are you going to do with it right how are you going to apply it right so we go through that process and say okay yeah so this is what i'm going to take away now of course from one passage you may get numerous thoughts and insights um and uh, and that's all good i encourage you you know when you are doing this devotional method to write it down so i usually keep a little book next to me and i just write down you know like whatever you get that day um you pray then you write it down it may be one thought it may be many thoughts you just put it down simply in simple form right so keep a little book a notebook write it down then you can go back to it you know the next day or sometime in the future you can go back to it and uh, reflect on it again so you don't forget otherwise uh, every day insights new insights you you might forget what you learned two days ago so it's always good to write it down so let's move forward similarly when you're doing a passage study there's another way to do it which is verse by verse okay now verse by verse is a even more detailed study right uh, the inductive study uh, which we said is more of getting the gist or the key insights key points from that passage but the same passage you can study verse by verse you know uh, you can look it up uh, look at everything that's happening in that maybe even look up the hebrew or the greek and see what's happening so you can do a very detailed study and we will uh, you know uh, we will of course in our third year we'll do a verse by verse study of uh, several new testament books and some old testament books but i will explain a little later when we share the tools how to look into the detail the meaning of the words all right so when you do a verse by verse study you're looking at every verse you're looking at the meaning of the words you're looking at phrases and um uh, pitch, you know illustrations that are being used and so on okay uh, so that's a much more detailed study of that now let's look at some other ways to study the word of god which we did mention these and we'll we'll talk a, a little bit more in detail on each of these a third way to study is what we call as a character study that means you're looking at a particular biblical character and we are trying to learn about god and about how we should walk with god through the example we see in that particular character particular person in that given situation right so in a character study uh, we are just looking at a person in a particular situation and there are many examples that we can take it you know for example daniel and you just look at how did daniel behave in daniel chapter 6 when there was an announcement made that if you pray to any other god you will be thrown to lions so you zoom in on that right and it's like you put a magnifying glass on that part of daniel's life right and then you begin to examine you know you go into the situation see daniel was in such a prominent position you know he was one of the prime ministers so to speak in the 
king's palace, a very important position. And see, there were people who were against him. You know, they, they wanted to pull him down. They didn't like him. But the Bible says he was a man who was of an excellent spirit. You know, uh, he, he was of such character that they, were, they couldn't find any fault with Daniel. And he knew about this announcement. And still he went and he prayed. And, you know, so you kind of focus in on it and say, what does this teach us about Daniel? Oh, and, um, you know, what kind of a man was he, etc. You know, you look into it. And then you also look at God's working, you know, how God was so faithful to protect Daniel and how God delivered him. And what was the result when God, you know, when he was delivered from the lion's den, the king elevated him, you know, and even the king was impacted. The king made an announcement. There is no God like Daniel's God, you know. So you study that. Right? So like this, we can look at many, many examples, you know. And uh, we do a character study. Character study. Of different people in the Bible. At a certain point in time of their life. And we try to learn about God. And we also try to learn about how we can walk with God. You know? So by looking at that, you know, there are lessons we can take away. Right? How we must be like Daniel, strong, courageous. We stand for what's right. And we don't give up. And, you know, we don't give up on our faith just because there is hardship and so on. So we take lessons from that. So that's a character study. But if you extend that for the full life of the person, start to finish, then we just call the same thing a biographical study. So you can study from the beginning through to the end. Right? And so, hey, this is how they walked with God through various seasons of life. And we can also connect, you know, that this is the behave like this at, in this season because what happened in their experience with God in the past. Because they experienced God like this in the past. Here we can see how strong they were, how courageous they were, etc. You know? So you can see that. Our goal, of course, is to learn about God and learn how to walk with God through the lives of all of these people. Okay? Character study. And that's it's very beautiful. Now, one big advantage of doing a character study is the message sticks in the minds of people. It sticks in the minds of people. Why? Because it's like you're looking at an example. Right? And that's in many, many, among many ways, that's one of the best ways to learn. It is just look at the example. Right? That's why it's so much easier for people to learn by seeing you than by listening to you. For to learn by listening to you, you have to repeat it so many times. <laughs> but when they see it in you, they get it. They get it. You know, they just, that's the way it is, right? So the, that's why character study, a biographical sketch, is, is uh, in many ways so much more impactful. I'm not saying that's the only way we should always preach and teach, but it's very impactful because. There is a, an example, an image that people can have in their minds. And that, that story, the stories will always stick in the minds of people. Right? So character study, a biographical sketch, is a very, very powerful way uh, to study the Word of God. And it encourages us because we can relate life to life. We can relate. Hey, he went through like this. I am going through like this. Very similar. We can relate to it. Other methods of study, which has to do with um, themes or topics or word study, right? So that's there's another way. Uh, we it's it's also called deductive study. That means you put all information together, and then you draw conclusions from that. So it's called deductive study, right? Then inductive study, you're going into the passage to find out. Inductive 
So you're doing observation, interpretation, application. In deduction is you're putting all the pieces together and then you're saying, okay, what do I get out of this? What comes out of this when I put all the pieces together? Right? So that's deductive. You're drawing conclusions based on all the information put together. Now, we can do it in three ways. We can study by topic. So you take a topic, example, healing, or redemption, or gifts of the Holy Spirit, any topic. And you study the topic from Genesis to Revelation. Every possible passage that is speaking on that topic, you put it, okay, and then you study. What do I hear? What do I see here? What do I see here? Whether it's a verse of scripture or whether it's a passage, you study. Right? So that's a topical set. On that topic, you go from Genesis to Revelation. Now, topical or thematic study is very important. If you want to have a clear understanding on that subject. Right? So... Inductive study, character study will not give us what we can get out of topical or thematic study. Right? So each one is serving a different purpose. Right? So if you want to say, this is what the Bible says on this topic, then you have to do topical study. You have to study that subject. From Genesis to Revelation. So do study that topic. Or we can say topic or theme. Like they're kind of similar almost, but people differentiate. A theme could be a, a broader subject. Example, the theme of purpose, the theme of identity, the theme of, you know, uh, some people may say, you know, uh, um, uh, how God deals with us as a community, you know, so you can look at it, Old Testament, New Testament, or priesthood, right? So topic and theme are almost similar, but themes de deal with broader subjects, right? But the point is, in both these cases, you have to study the subject from Genesis to Revelation. Do a full thing, put it all together. And then you draw conclusion. What do I see in the Bible on this subject? You have to put everything together. Don't omit something. Oh, I don't like it, so I'll leave it out. No, that's not it. Put everything in, and then you draw or deduce or draw conclu derive conclusions. Okay. Similarly, a word study means you pick a particular word. Example, hot. I'm just giving hot or the word love, or the word faith, or the word life. You take that word and you study that word from Genesis to Revelation. Right? So now when you do a word study, generally what will happen is you'll say, okay, in the Hebrew, these are the words, Hebrew words that are translated heart. In the Greek, these are the Greek words translated, heart. Then he'll also say, okay, there are some, sometimes there are synonyms. That means heart, spirit. They're used interchangeably. Oh, so then if you're going to study, do a word study on heart, you also will have to study the word spirit. Okay. And then you say, okay, heart. How was it used? Then you'll see in the Old Testament, heart, of, of course, physical heart. But heart is not only used for spirit, but it's also used for emotions. It's used for uh, what we would typically connect with the soul. So you, then you'll say, oh, in the Old Testament, the word heart doesn't exclusively mean spirit, but also includes the soul. Whereas when you come into the New Testament, it's used a little differently. Because in the New Testament, the mind or the soul is differentiated from the heart. 
very clearly. Right? So it's, oh, in the New Testament, usually when you see the word heart, it's most often referring to the spirit, because when the writer wants to talk about the soul, he would use the word soul or minds. So you'll, you'll, you'll see that observation. So like that, when you do a word study, once again, it, 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 it helps you see these kinds of things, which you normally will not see when you do inductive studying or when you do character biographical sketch. All with me? I will show you how to do it when we use the tools, right? But I'm giving an explanation here on these things, uh, topical, thematic, and word study. Okay, so let me just pause and see if there are any questions from those online. Um, Roshan has a question. I use word study dictionary. Are there are there topical and thematic study dictionaries too? So usually, I'm answering Roshan's question. So usually, uh, for topical and thematic, you will find books written. So you you know for the others, example, character study, biographical sketch, topical and thematic. Uh, somebody would have um, done it, and they would have written books on it. You know, so uh, you will find that. For example, even in uh, at APC, you know, we have books like Who We Are in Christ. So that's a thematic study. It's a study on the theme of our identity in Christ or marriage and family or a redemption or healing. So these those books are basically topical or thematic studies from the Word of God. So it's all been compiled in the book. Um, so you'll find books like that. And then um, it's always good to read multiple uh, authors or writers. Uh, because sometimes, you know, uh, not every author would cover everything uh, exhaustively. So it's always good to, you know, uh, read multiple on the same theme or topic. Okay? Uh, yeah. Good question. All right. So let me just go a little bit more forward on this. All right. So we talked about topical, thematic, or word study, what it means, how to do it. Then there are other approaches, which is a chapter, chapter study. Now, again, to study a chapter, uh, we can do it in many ways. You can do a chapter summary, which is trying to get the gist of the chapter. So it's not a very detailed study, but you're saying, this chapter, these are the main points in this chapter. Okay. So it's a gist of that. You can get a chapter, uh, a summary, the main insights in that chapter. Or you can get into the details. So this is called a chapter analysis. A chapter analysis is a detailed study of the same chapter. So you're not just doing a summary. You're not saying, oh, chapter 3 talks about this. No. Now you're going into every verse of chapter 3. They're looking into every element in the verse, right? The words, the illustrations, uh, things that are given in that. Uh, so you're doing an analysis of that. Now, if you extend chapter study to a book, then you do a f you're studying all the chapters in the book, then obviously that's a book study, right? Uh, a book study, again, you can do a book background, just uh, looking at what is the background, what is the context, when was it written, whom was it written to, why was it written. That's a book background study. But that's usually not enough. Um, you can then, what we really like to do is to do a detailed study of the book. So the book background, there's a book survey, which is an overview of the book, or you can do a book synthesis. A book synthesis means you're getting into the, the detail of the book, verse by verse. So in our third year, we do book synthesis of um, all the epistles, Gospel of John, Book of Acts, and then we will do Daniel and Revelation. Right? So it's a book synthesis, meaning you will read every verse and you'll give the meaning of every verse in the context of the chapter, in the context of the book, 
and in the context of the Bible. Right? So because the book belongs to the Bible. Right? So when you're interpreting a verse, you have to interpret that verse in the context of the chapter, in the context of the book, and in the context of the whole Bible. So book synthesis. So if you really want to understand the book, example, Romans. It's a fascinating book. I, I really love it. Love the book of Romans. But you go have to interpret verse by verse. When you're reading chapter, you know, chapter five, you have to know what he said in chapter one. Because there's a continuing thought. You just don't interpret chapter five by itself, right? You have to interpret chapter five in the light of what he said in all the previous chapters. And then you have to look at specific words, what he's saying, and carry all that with you as you journey through the remaining chapter. It's a very good way to study. So when you study a book, you can do a book background. You can do a book survey, high level, or you can do a book synthesis, meaning every detail, every verse in context. And that's a very good way to study. And we will do that in number third year. All right. So these are all ways to study. Now, what I want to show with, for us is, see, when after saying all this, you'll say, well, how am I going to do it? Right? I want us to know that we have the tools to do it. That means you don't have to struggle by yourself. There are tools that we can use to do all this study. All right? The simplest devotional study, inductive study, you do by yourself. Right? You're reading. You're praying, you're drawing insight. But when you want to do these other studies, like thematic, topical, word study, chapter study, book study, there are tools for us. Okay. So after the break, uh, in the next lecture, I'm going to just walk us through some tools and show us how to use these tools. Right? And it is, I would encourage all of us to become familiar how to use these tools because. When I say do chapter study, do verse by verse study, it, it seems very like a big job. How are we going to do? Oh, such a big task. Yeah. Well, there are tools. Make use of the tools. It'll help us. It'll make our work very fast. All right. So we'll take a break here. I think you've had overload of information. Uh, let's see now. Any questions from those online? OK. All right. So after the break, when we come back, we'll look, we'll look at the tools, what you can use to do these kinds of studying as we discuss, right? Let's come back in 10 minutes, please. Thank you. <laughs> 